This is a brief introduction to Einstein's special theory of relativity. First, we should discuss what an inertial reference frame is. It is a rectilinear coordinate system that is at rest, or perhaps moving with constant velocity, but it is a non-accelerating reference frame. Let's identify inertial and non-inertial reference frames in the list. You can try it for yourself if you like. Then I'll give my answers. Okay, so a spacecraft moving at constant speed in a straight line. That would be considered inertial. How about a rock that's dropped from one of Earth's bridges? Well, Earth itself is not accelerating, but the rock is. So I'm going to say non-inertial. We're looking for constant velocity situations here. How about a bowling ball rolling down an alley that's on Earth's surface? Okay, so a couple of things. One, the bowling ball is rolling. So it has a centripetal acceleration happening. Also, it's on Earth's surface. And Earth is, of course, rotating itself, as well as revolving around the sun. So I'm going to say non-inertial here. How about a spinning ice skater who's on a constant velocity spaceship? Now it's good that the spaceship is at constant velocity, but the ice skater is spinning. That involves centripetal acceleration, so I'm going to say non-inertial. A car turning a corner? Non-inertial. Once again, it's accelerating centripetally. A spacecraft landing on the moon would certainly be non-inertial, because uh, it's going to have to slow down. And a spacecraft traveling with its engines off far from any stars or planets. That, I believe, we can consider inertial because they didn't mention any type of acceleration. All right, so Einstein's special theory of relativity deals with inertial reference frames only. The general theory of relativity involves acceleration. And the special theory came first, and it itself is difficult to understand, but it is simpler. Uh, the general theory came about eight years later and it is significantly more advanced. A couple of other things we're going to need to consider for uh, Einstein's relativity is the definition of proper time and proper length. An observer measures the proper length of an object, which is sometimes written as L sub O, when that object is at rest in the inertial reference frame of the observer. So you have to be in the reference frame of the object that you're measuring in order to measure the proper length. Similarly, in a given inertial reference frame, the proper time between two events, T sub O, is measured by a clock which is at rest in that inertial reference frame. Let's just try a simple example here of several objects. There's several objects involved. Ted is traveling in his railroad car at a speed V, relative to Alice, who's standing on the ground nearby. Ted is playing with his yo-yo and uses a clock on the railroad car to measure the time it takes for the yo-yo to complete one up-and-down oscillation. The yo-yo is also observed by Alice and, uh, and observed by a bird flying nearby. The bird has the same speed V as Ted. And there's an astronaut cruising at a high speed 
uh, who also can observe the situation. Which observer can measure the proper time of the yo-yo's period? We want to select all that apply. You can try it and then I'll give my answer. So Ted can definitely measure the true time of the yo-yo's period because he is in the inertial reference frame. This is because the yo-yo is in his reference frame. Could Alice measure the proper time of the yo-yo's period? Now it used to be believed in Sir Isaac Newton's day that time would be absolute. That if one person measured time to be one thing, then everybody else in the universe would measure the time to be the same. But Einstein's relativity showed that this wouldn't actually be the case. And we'll get into why shortly. But for now, all we have to know is that Alice cannot measure the proper time of that yo-yo. It's because she's not in the reference frame that the yo-yo is being carried in. Now the astronaut can't measure the proper time of the yo-yo either because its reference frame is moving much faster than Ted's is. But the bird has the same velocity as Ted. Therefore, they are actually considered to be in the same reference frame. What defines a reference frame? Well, you can draw it with an axis, a horizontal and vertical axis, and then you can give it a letter. This is Ted's frame, frame S. Now, Ted's frame is moving with velocity V. But the bird is also moving with velocity v, so the bird is actually in reference frame s. However, if we check out the astronaut's reference frame, we could call that s prime. Or give it some other letter. But as we can see, the velocity of this frame is much larger. So S prime and S are different reference frames, different coordinate systems. But the bird can measure the period of the yo-yo correctly. They'll measure it to be a period T sub O. We could also take a look at Alice's reference frame. Her reference frame is not moving at all relative to Earth. So I won't put a green arrow on it. Okay, now, who can measure the proper length of Ted's cart? Go ahead and try it for yourself. So since Ted is in the reference frame of the cart, Ted can measure the proper length of the cart. He would call it L sub O. And not only can he measure it correctly, but the bird can too. It's because they are traveling at the same velocity as the cart.